All right, welcome back to part two. We've now put on our balancer removal tool. It, to some people, it may not be the correct one, but honestly, it actually gets the job done. All right, so it should be on there properly. Grab a 19 mil ratchet spanner. And hopefully it doesn't come off in spectacular fashion. Really hope not, but you know. Let's see what happens. There's enough, looks like enough engagement. Yeah, here we go. It's gonna come off in spectacular fashion, isn't it? I just have a gut feeling. Yeah, here it comes. Do not pop off, just slide off nicely. Don't need to give me a heart attack. Ah, there we go. Alright then. It didn't pop off spectacular fashion, but it popped. I wonder where my light went. Put it back on charge. It's lathered in just sealant for whatever reason, I don't know. <laughs> we do it cost fuck around. We don't question people's uh, actions because once in a lifetime everyone does something dodgy to their car. Little it's safe or not is a different question. Alright, balance is off and everything. Let's pull the remaining of these plug wires off. Oh, they just look fantastic. Zip tie work and all, courtesy of Benji. Because <laughs> you got tired of them being extremely long and catching fire. Well, no, question, no, they haven't caught fire yet. Yet. They have melted. Another point or another. Chuck those up there. Um, do I dare remove the valve covers first? No. I'll pull the rest of these wiring off the injectors. These injectors are missing their clips for whatever reason. Um, wow, that's... Why bother putting a hose clamp on it when you can't even physically pull it off? That required a bit of gusto. Uh, unplug it here. I'd really love to delete the EGRs. I really would. <laughs> the, the EGR, because over there, um, everyone knows what it stands for. The inside of this intake manifold is covered in carbon, which would contribute to massive amounts of, you know, bad fuel economy here, there, and everywhere. Time to undo the ghetto fuel lines as everyone has seen before. Yeah, should be no fuel pressure in it, but because I when I turned it off before, I turned it off by my fancy kill switch. So, that came off with way too much ease. That gives me the illusion it was slowly popping off. <laughs> oh. Hello. Where's you tie? Yeah, strip a little fuel. Come on. It smells fantastic. <clears throat> Remove this pesky amp wire out of the way. No sparky sparky, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> I shall remind myself later on to make sure that's actually tight. Right. Now these bolts are a ten are a ten mil, but will not ten mils will f not fit on them properly. They will strip. So three eight socket for that one. Um, I would attempt to fit my electric ratchet in there, but some part of me knows that probably went in well. Yeah. 
pretty sure 99 percent of the bolts are in here. And that's a pretty huge 98 percent chance. What we call a fat chance. Instead of making you wait, we'll put this on the time lapse because this could take me longer than I expected. So we'll put it on the time lapse and we'll get back to you when I've got it all undone. All right then, so all the bolts are out. This should just come off with ease, um, except for one bolt I've ever removed, which would be the bolt for the EGR. So that back. I knew I forgot something. Well, can you like not do that, please? I'm not surprised that this car is trying to kill me. Trying to decapitate me, take my head clean off. Jeez, mate. You can see the, the love hate relationship with this car, it's trying to kill me. All this trying, yeah, take my fucking head off. So, all the bolts are out for the Intech manifold. Just gonna remove this one pesky EGR. And then Vacuum break uh, the vacuum hose for the brake booster. Off and that, and then realistically, this should just come straight off. And that's exactly what you want right there. So a little bit of water. Well, unfortunately, a little bit of water has seeped, but there's uh, there's really not much I can do about it. A little bit of water. I'll get some rags and shit and clean that up. Looks pretty good from last time I was in here. Benji had last time we had take all the valve train out. He had soaked the lifters in to greaser and we because they the plungers were stuck because it's a hydraulic lifter. It was stuck. So it flat out refused to um plunger. So we just cleaned all the way out for them and it yeah it still made brackets so at least we did a nice service means that those lifters may not be totally junk. Some good spells. Alright, we'll uh, get the electric ratchet, clean up some tools a little bit, and then we'll take those valve covers off and start removing those uh, lockers. Now, you're probably going to see that. It may, when I pull the lifters out, I'm not really going to care which way they're going because I'm going to get, be getting um, new ones in the near future. So, it's really not going to matter. So, go with 3 8 Go with a mediocre little long extension for no reason, because why not? Pull that thing off. These valve covers off, and of course, I'm going to misplace my 3 8 with a 7 16. That's alright. There's a fan in my other one. Now I'm going to be reusing these gaskets down here because this valley gasket kit's only like maybe two weeks old. So, and the valve train is so clean, I'm going to keep it because there's nothing wrong with it. Um, this wise, the valve spring on the other hand, well, 
They are just not the right ones. That is my expert opinion here. I'll clarify, I am not a mechanic. Far from it. <laughs> so we'll remove this side. I don't think that was even ever screwed in, to be honest. Can I get to the back one? Can I get to it? Can I get to it? I think so. I did. As you can see, it's relatively clean in there. Issues. And we will find out exactly what those are once you pull that timing case off. All right, it's time to pull off the uh, valve train and see how it's fared in the last couple of weeks. So we'll zoom that in for you. That's too far. <laughs> we'll pull this valve train off and uh, we'll have a look. Crack them all loose first and then I'll Is, it looks fairly clean in here, yet you know, problems. Like I said, we don't plan to reuse um, this valve frame because I will definitely be putting a more stronger valve train in it, one that's actually suited to this camshaft, whatever freak of nature it is. <laughs> Just a shame, you know. Old mate put in so much effort for little reward, but that is how it is when it comes to cars, especially like I said before, when you're picking up off old people's projects, that's what I've done with this. Like, no, just to my mate, but he was doing the same thing. He picked it off another guy, like this. I think the engine cost like six, seven hundred bucks. I don't know. So. I don't think the engine's garbage, I just, I know it's tired, I know compression's down on one cylinder by a fair bit, like I think cylinder one was 120, um, spray a bit of fluid down its throat, pump it up to 140, the rest of the cylinders were 160, 170, so that is a big difference. To be honest, I never really built this car for speed, I wanted a bit more oomph. You know what I mean? Like plenty of people say, oh, why would you drop the V6? Ah, because it's fun. Why not? Everyone does Alice motors. Let's do something different. I know people have done it in the past, but like, don't get me wrong. Alice motor's nice, bar motor's nice, but why not something different? Alright. Rocker, rocker plate. Let's remove these push rods. Nice to see that there is actually oil flow in them. That means that they were actually working. This needs a fucking oil change. <laughs> I guess you could say one way or another, you could get an oil change, oil change by, uh, I don't know, putting a nice hole in the block. That could be one way to go about it. Or it might not be. Oh, 
Ah, here comes the rain again. Typical Melbourne weather. You're locked in the house and you can't leave the house. Got those nice two rockers and two push rods and a rocker plate and a I'm laying the part, I have laid them out to be honest how they actually have come out of the engine, mind you. If I do reuse them or maybe find it soon. Right, now I'll remove the, the lifter retaining brackets. There's two of them, so take them in your terminal. I'll actually spill the truth on this one. When I had put this back together, and this was the rookie mistake, and I am glad I didn't break anything, I didn't actually put these back in and <laughs> One lifter out of the rest of them came up, spun around, and smashed itself on the cam. Thank fuck it didn't destroy the cam. Well, we don't actually know that, but that was like almost 12 months ago. Never will I make that mistake again. These are always such a pain in the ass to get off. One thing I didn't clean, or well, one thing he didn't clean, but that's the dumbbell. <laughs> it's really no big deal. To be honest. Right. Check off the other side. Wiring, get lost. Let's, uh, let's remove these lifters, shall we? They've been in here a couple weeks, so I can't imagine that they've changed much at all. Basic wear on it, nothing, ma nothing dramatic. Oh, actually. Put this container of freight clean. We'll put them in there. And... Benji has put this container on. That's right. We'll put them aside for the time being. Just put them down here. Get them all sussing out. Because what I'll do is I'll get some brake clean, some greaser, and I'll clean them up again and verify. I have photos from last time, they were out. And mind you, I did, they did go back on their exact load that they came off. So, I'll clean them up. The photos I have from last time is to make sure that it hasn't actually done any more damage to it. I'm actually kind of excited to pull the timing case off and actually have a look at the uh, camshaft in it. The running joke that I had a ghost cam is that no, there's no backing line off, they're all on. Oil is nice and black. Just the way people like it. The good news is though, they are coming out like relatively smooth, like it's not actually binding up. I am seeing a bit of wear on them. Nothing crazy though. 
bit of water in that one, but that's because there's still water in the block. Typical. If I had a ball, Skype camera, I'd stick, the, stick that down the hole and actually see if I could see this camshaft. But don't have one of those, all the funds for it. Alright, those are all removed. We can now proceed to removing the timing case and revealing that camshaft and seeing if that brand new tension I put on is actually still in one piece. Alright then, let's uh, remove some pulleys and then we can start getting to pulling an actual timing case off. Alright then. Might need, need pack to get the other ones off. Maybe. When I say that, a big maybe. Do I even have socket size of that small and half inch? Pretty sure I do. Pretty sure those water pump bolts are tens or smaller. No, it looks like. Yeah, they just, they just either is stronger than I thought it was, or these weren't. Right. Yeah, they're tight. <laughs> Clutch is so going in this. <laughs> I'll fish for you later. <laughs> right in the oil water infested bucket. I'll fish for you later, mate. <laughs> Uh, Alright, we'll definitely get the impact for that one and maybe stop dropping sockets in there. At least it's getting a some of a bar. Pretty sure that's a 15? Just like... No! 16. It could be even a mystery 17. This is just trial and error. Yep, 16. That wasn't tight either. Oh. Thing is, this car wasn't being fairly driven in at all anyway, it's just been moved in and out of the garage. So it's no big deal. Gonna be re replacing most of this stuff anyway. Alright. 10 mil out. Well, we shall start pulling out. We'll position this a bit nicer. Now the water's gonna run down the front of it. And remove the water pump. That gasket should still be good, it hasn't been on there that long. Pretty sure the main water pump, these top ones here, are 10 mils. Now, on my part, you might be seeing a fair bit of sealant come out of it. That is because most some of these bolts go directly into the water jacket of the water pump and the housing. That was honestly just to make sure that I covered any possible water leaks. So, seems like it's on the trick because I haven't seen any water come out of it. Are you sure there's one more that size on the knee? Mm, just look at those, they might be a 12 to 12 or 13. Might just grab the 13. No. Grab the 13, even though I have a feeling it's the 12. Now you've got water. Water coming out of this one.
Is there any some of these? I've got more of them than others. I'm gonna wait for that to drain before I even bother. Alright. Ah. I have to get a tiny flat head to give that a bit of a cry. Hopefully this gasket actually comes off in good condition because it's not that old. But I have a feeling I may not have that luxury. Actually, I have the mallet. You just give a bit of a, a bit of a love tap on the top. See if I can get that off without damaging it. There we go. Mm, Alright, doesn't matter. Typical paper gasket, that's alright. That's alright. Just a paper gasket. Which I expected it to. I did its job though. I'm not complaining. Um, pull this cover off. Make sure this goes back on because this actually keeps dirt and shit away from the crank angle sensor and keeps the wires that for the cam sensor and the crank angle sensor away from spinning objects. It would be a bad day. That got caught up in a in an accident. All right then. Um, let's get a position that over there, and we'll pull this oil filter off. Can't imagine it's very tight, but it shouldn't be. No, any guns of oil? I'm going to cut this open later on because I have a suspicious feeling I might find chunks in it somewhere. In that bucket. Alrighty then. Let's uh, start cracking these bolts loose. We can leave the cam sensor in, that's fine. It's not a barrier where you have to remove the cam phases first before you remove the. Uh, Rocker cover, mind you, I know for a fact I'm throws on different generations of barrel FG to BA. Um pretty sure those are deep socket 13s. Pretty sure it's 13. I have that's 13. Alright. No reason to use an impact on this one. We'll just use um yeah, just brush it. Bit more water to come out. Crank <laughs> angle sensor. 
looks fairly new and it's not original, so it's been changed at some point, which is good, which means I won't have to actually change it myself. Um, yeah, we'll let that drain and we'll come back to it. Yeah, let it drain and we'll come back to that in a moment. Alright guys, it's uh, it's finished draining, but I hate to be that um, that guy that leaves you on a cliffhanger. We're going to have to stay tuned for part 3, where we remove the timing case and finally get to see what camshaft lies inside this motor. That'll do it guys, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.